The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, 13th chapter, text number 1 and 2, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on October 13th, 1975, in Durban, South Africa. Om Namo Bhavati Bhaktivedanta. <coughs> The, we are reading one chapter from Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter. The subject matter is nature, the enjoyer, and consciousness. In Sanskrit, Sanskrit it is called Tritra. Tetra Vyam. Tetra means the feel. Just like an agriculturist, they work uh, on the field. The worker or the agriculturist owns the land and he works there, and according to his labor, he enjoys the fruits. Similarly, we have been given this body as a field of activity. Every one of us, not only human beings, but also other living entities, there are eight million four hundred thousand forms of living entities. Jalajanamalakhan. Uh, in the water, there are nine hundred thousand forms of living entities. Then, Jalajanavalakkhani is Thavara Lakkhavinshat. Thavara means the living entities who cannot move, just like the trees, plants, grass, vegetables. They are standing in one place. Uh, they are also called uh, having no legs. Ahastani, Sahastana, Abhadani, Chadusvadana. This is nature's law that uh, the living entities which have no hands, they are eatable for the living entities who have hands. Ahastani, Sahastana, Apadani, Chatuspada, and the living entities which cannot move, they are the food for the living entities which has got four legs. Nunam Mahatana Tattva Jiva Jivasya Jivanam. In this way, the weak is the food for the strong. This is the law of nature, that one living entity is the food for another living entity. So, when a person eats another living entity, it is not unnatural. This is nature's law. But when you come to the human form of living entity, you must use your discrimination. Uh, just like one living entity is food for the another living entity, it does not mean in the lower animals, sometimes the father and mother eat the offspring. But in the history of human society, it has not come into notice 
that the father and mother eating the offspring. But time has come when the mother is killing offspring. That has come already. This is due to Kali So, here Arjuna's question is to understand the field and the worker on the field. He questions Arjuna was, Arjuna inquired from Krishna, Prakriti purusham chaiva chetrang chetragya mevacha etad veditam ichyami gyanam gyam cha keshava. Krishna's another name is Keshava. So, he is addressing Krishna, my dear Keshava. I want to know these subject matters. Prakriti Puru. Prakriti means nature, material nature. And Purusha means the enjoyer, just like the living entities. We are trying to enjoy this material nature. Another prakriti puru, purusha means, real purusha means the supreme enjoyer, God, Krishna. And prakriti means which is enjoyed. Another meaning, prakriti means woman, and purusha means man. So, this material world is going on. One party is trying to enjoy, and the other party is being enjoyed. So, Arjuna wanted to know what is the distinction what is the uh, in, integral part and parcel of this prakriti and purusha? Then, chetram chetragya. Ga means one who knows, and chetragya and one who knows the field, just like the agriculturist, the cultivator, he knows that this is my feet. He works there. Different cultivator works in his own field. So this khetra means this body. Khetra, the field of activity. We have got different field of activities. So khetra, khetra gancha, khetra meva, eta bevi chant. My dear Krishna, I want to know from you uh, why he wants to know from Krishna. Because Krishna is in form. Whatever knowledge we get from the in that is perfect knowledge. Ordinary human being, they are not perfect. Ordinary human beings, they are subjected to four deficiencies. We are ordinary human beings. We commit mistakes. That's a fact, every one of us. We are illusion. Our senses are imperfect. And with all these paraphernalia, when we want to teach, that is not teaching, that is cheating. Because I am imperfect, how can I be teacher? That is not possible. Therefore, we have to learn from a person who has no defects in his life, or a liberated person. A liberated person means he does not commit mistake. He is not illusion, he does not cheat, and his senses are not imparted. This is the 
more signs of liberated person. So our process, the Krishna consciousness movement means we take knowledge from Krishna who is liberated from these four kinds of deficiencies. That knowledge is perfect. Similarly, Arjuna is also inquiring from Krishna. Etad veditum ichyam. Etad vedit. Etad veditum ichyam. Gyanam jayam chakrishama. What is actual knowledge and what is the subject matter of knowledge? That means six questions are presented by Arjuna before Krishna. One, where Prakriti Purush, Chetra Chetra and Gyanam Gyam. What is knowledge and what is the subject matter of knowledge? Six questions. See Bhagavan was. Now here Krishna is speaking, but bad day who recorded this dialogue between Krishna and Ujjyam. He is writing Bhagavan Uvāsa. He does not say Krishna Uvāsa. Krishna may be misunderstood, but Krishna is Bhagavan. He wants to stress on this point. Uh, Krishna Sthu Bhagavan Sayam. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated by Vyasde that Krishna Sthu Bhagavan Sayam. Similarly, in the Brahma Samhita, it is stated, Ishara Parama Krishna. Ishara means controller. So Parama means the Supreme. So every one of us, we are more or less controller. But we are not Supreme controller. We must know this. Ishara Parama Krishna. Uh, there are some men who claim to become Ishara, to become God. So we have no objection. Uh, that if somebody says, I am God or I am controller, we have no objection. But if somebody says that I am supreme God or supreme controller, then we have got it. Uh, supreme means he has no control. And ordinary controller, just like we are, you are controller, you are controlling some sphere of life, I am also controlling some. But I also being controlled. But Ishara Parama Krishna means he is the supreme controller. He has no controller over him. He controls everyone, but he is not controlled by anyone. Therefore it is called Ishara Parama Krishna. Satchidananda Vigraha Anadi Radhi Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. These are the Vedic statements and our process of knowledge. Veda. Veda means knowledge. Vetri Veda Veda Gyan. Supreme knowledge. Perfect knowledge. That is Veda. So, Krishna is the supreme person. He is the speaker of Vedas. The subject matter of Vedas is to know Krishna. Veda is to survive Aham Eva Vedam. If you are a student of Vedas, then you must have clear conception of God. That is real knowledge. No vague idea, but clear conception. That is uh, knowledge, Vedic knowledge. Ultimate, therefore, the Vedanta philosophy. Veda means knowledge, and Anta means the ultimate. 
एवरी थिंग हेज नॉट अल्टीमेट सो सो वेदांत मीन्स द अल्टीमेट नॉलेज ऑफ वेदास दैट इज स्टेटेड इन द भगवद गीता इज फाइन इन द फिफ्टीन चैप्टर वेद सर्वई अहम ही वेदम वेदांत विद वेदांत कृत अहम so he is the compiler of vedanta philosophy and he is the knower of vedanta philosophy therefore arjun is asking from krishna because he is the ultimate and ultimate supreme person means bhagavan bhagavan means opulence and ban means one who possesses the word sanskrit bhag it is added when there is the question of possessing ostate bhak and bhak pratpar this is sanskrit gama so bhagavat bhava means opulence opulence means six kinds of opulence sarisha japur all well all pain all strength All beauty, all knowledge, all renunciation—these are the opulences. Uh, we can have some money. You have some money. I have got some money. But none of us can claim that I have got all the money. That is not possible. That—that that is claimed by Bhagwan. I have got some strength. You have got some strength. But nobody has, nobody of us can claim that I have got all the strength. So one who possesses all the wealth, all the strength, all the fame, all beauty, all knowledge, all renunciation, he is called Bhagavan. The meaning of Bhagavan is this: Sarai Sajja Purna. Therefore, as they say, Bhagavan Vacha. He is not ordinary person. Is speaking. Who is full with all knowledge? Because that is the qualification of Bhagwan. He is competent with all knowledge. Uh, so Bhagwan was. So what does Bhagwan says? Idam shariram kauntya khetram iti abhiviyat. My dear, kauntya or jom. Or John, another name is Kuntia, because he is the son of Kunti. His mother's name is Kunti. Therefore, he is addressed as Kuntia, and Kunti has got relationship with Krishna. Kunti is the sister of Krishna's father, Basudev. Therefore, out of affection. For his aunt, he is addressing or John as the son of his aunt Kunti. Kunti. Idam shri ram Kunti ha chetram. The field of activity it is of India. The two answers uh, out of the six question. क्षेत्र क्षेत्र गा प्रकृति पुरुष ज्ञान ज्ञान इज आंसर इन द फर्स्ट टू प्लेयर व्हाट इज क्षेत्र द कृष्ण से दिस बॉडी इज द क्षेत्र क्षेत्र मीन्स दिस बॉडी एंड क्षेत्र गा चेतक जब व्यक्ति दिस बॉडी वन यू नो दिस बॉडी एतक जब व्यक्ति तंग प्राहु क्षेत्र ही इज कॉल क्षेत्र इट्स लाइक आई नो माय बॉडी द पेन्स एंड प्लेजर ऑफ माय बॉडी द नेसेसिटीज ऑफ माय बॉडी हाउ आई एम सिचुएटेड इन दिस बॉडी आई नो यू आल्सो नो यू यू आर अबाउट योर बॉडी एंड माय बॉडी About my body, you do not know what pains and pleasure I am feeling 
what sense and pleasure you are feeling. I do not know. But I know the pains and pleasure of my body. You know the pains and pleasure of your body. Therefore, in relationship with your body, you are Khetraga, and in relationship with my body, I am Khetraga. My body is Khetra, the field of activities, and your body is the field of activities. So this is clear conception of Khetra and Khetraga. The body is called Khetra, and the knower of the body, uh, if you simply study our body, if we simply take this question little seriously, whether I am this body or I am different from my body, to study each and every part of your body, to study your finger, you know or I know it is my finger. I do not say it is I finger, it is my finger. Therefore, my, I am different from my body. That's why I say it is, this is my issue. So I am not issue. Ah. But similarly, you study every part of your body, you know that it is your body. You are not this body. This is study. This is meditation. First of all, study your body. Whether you are body or you are different body. That is actually, the other day I was speaking, that a man's father has died and he is crying, my father has gone. So my father, your father is lying on the bed. The father which you have seen so long, lifelong, the body that is on the bed, why you are crying, your father is gone. That means he has never seen his father. Neither the father has seen the son. Everyone sees this body, but not the owner of the body. That is the defect of modern education, that everyone by contemplation can understand that this finger is my finger, not I finger. Still he cannot understand that he is different from his body. Uh, that is to be understood. That is real knowledge. Khetra, khetra, gaya, jnanam. One should have very clear knowledge that I am not this body. This is my body. You are not this body. It is your body. Uh, you are spirit. I am a spirit. We are different from this body. This is the first instruction given in the Bhagavad Gita in the beginning. Devina Smin Jathadehi Kaumara Jubana Jara Tathadi Hantara Prati Dhira Sattva Namayati. We are not this body. I am not this body. You are not this body. We are changing body every moment. Imperceptible, uh, changing body. Uh, sometimes it is found that the child has grown now to become a boy, but he has not become suddenly a boy. The body has changed. Uh, body has changed every minute. Uh, but all of a sudden, or at a certain moment, we see that the body has changed. So, this is real knowledge that I am not this body, I am changing my body, and when I shall finally change this body, I will get another body. This is my position. Katha Deham Prati. So, Krishna says, Etalja Bhetti Tanga Prahu Ketraga. If he tells Vidaha, if one understands that he is not this body, he is different from this body, uh, from practical 
example and practical experience, one can understand it. Especially human being can understand it. And if the human being neglects this understanding, then he remains animal. So he will go for all. That is the injunction of the Shastra. Jashyata buddhi kunate tidhatate sadhik kalatra jishubhavama yudhyati jatitha buddhi shalile na tarhiti janesu avijnesu saiva gokara jashyata buddhi kunate tidhatate This body, according to Ayurvedic system of medicine, this body is made of three elements, papa putta bal. Uh, mucus, uh, bile, and cup. So anyway, uh, so this has okay. This body is made of material element. I am a spirit soul. I am not material element. Aham Brahmas, I am a spirit soul. This is not. Uh, but if one does not take this knowledge, he remains with the bodily concepts of life. I finger, not my finger, then he is not. I head, not my head. Nobody says I head. Everyone says my head. And find out who is I. This is knowledge. Ah. Therefore, Krishna says, Etadja Vetti, one who understands this simple education in the beginning. Etadja Vetti. If can one understands this, that I am not this body, I am the owner of the body, uh, I am the occupier of the body. Uh, the body is just like a rented house, and there are two interested persons. One is the occupier and the other is the owner. That will be explained. That I am the occupier of this body. I am not actually owner. The owner is Krishna or God. This house is owned by Krishna or God. But just like the field, the agriculturist, the cultivator takes the land from the king or the government. He pays little tax and he works on it. Similarly, everything belongs to God. Ishavasamidam sadvam. Nothing belongs to us. We also belong to God. This is knowledge. Uh, but God has given this piece of farm or land for our activity. Uh, that will be explained in the next part. Krishna says, Khetragdhanchapi Manavidhi. Khetragdha means khet, what is Khetra? And the uh, living entity is the occupier of this body. So Krishna says, there is another occupier, interested person of this, of this body. Khetragdhanchapi Manavidhi. Uh, that is myself. Kritangan Chapi Mangavidhi Sarva Khetri Subhara. So what is the distinction between these two persons? One is the occupier and the other is the owner. He says, Sarva Khetri Subhara. In all different bodies, I am the owner. The living entity, he is occupied just like a big landlord. He has got many houses. And in each house or each apartment, there are separate tenants. Similarly, these, everything belongs to God. Ishamasno, idam sadbam. Everything belongs to God. Nothing belongs to us. But the same relationship, he is the owner, we are simply occupied. Uh, so there are two persons interested in this body. One is the individual soul living entity 
and the other is the super soul god he is also within this body where he stay ishara sarvabhutana ridese arjuna tishtati ah god is living within the core of the heart and the living entity he is also living within this core of heart they are living just like two birds sitting on the branch of one tree these are the breathing statement there are two birds sitting on the branch of the same tree one bird is eating the fruit of the tree and the other bird simply witnessing this is the vedic statement ah so the eating bird we are living in it we are eating the fruit as we are working and the result of our working we are enjoying but god the super soul he is not interested in eating the fruit of the tree he is self satisfied he is simply observing how you are working because we are working with this body and god is situated in the same heart the god is there and with individual soul also there so uh, there why he is there because he is friend sri ram sarvabhutana ah uh, it is stated in the vedas that two friendly birds god is our actual friend well we are friend sri ram uh he is simply trying to turn our face towards him uh so long he does not do so he is changing different body and god is also going with him he is so friendly uh, just to advise him in due time that why you are changing from one body to another one body to another why don't you come to me and live peacefully blissful life that is god mission jada jada hi dharma sabrani bhavati tada atmanam sajami hum so god is so great friend of us he is always witness witness and as i am desiring god is giving us facility all right you want to enjoy like this you take this body and enjoy actually you are not enjoying ah uh, when we have no discrimination of food we can eat anything anything and everything let's say the hogs and pigs so god said all right you take the body of a pig and hog and you can eat even up to stew stew uh, i give you the facility uh, that is as we are desiring so god is supplying a type of body for our enjoyment ah ishara sarvabhutanam riddeshe arjuna tishtati bhramayan sarvabhutani jantrarudhani maya he orders material nature that this individual soul wants a certain type of body to enjoy like this so give him so material nature immediately makes ready a type of body jan jan baap is maran lo ke to jan pand so at the time of that as our desires my mind is obsessed with certain type of desire the immediately similar body is ready ah the daivana trena by superior law the living entity is entered into the om of a particular mother and he develops the particular body then he comes out and enjoys the suffering this is going on bhuta bhuta pradiyati so god is witness he is along with us always whatever we are desiring whatever we are working he is witness and he is giving the result that what krishna says hitragan chapi man vidhi i am also one of the occupant 
of this body. But what is the difference between you and me? You know simply about your body. I know everything of everyone's body. That is it. Khetrangan sapi maang vidhi. Sarva khetri. God knows what are the desires and activities of a little ant and he knows what are the desires and activities of Lord Brahma, the biggest of the biggest living entity within this universe and the smallest everywhere. God. It is said, Ishara Sarvabhutana Vidyesha Arjuna Tishtati, he is situated in everyone's heart. It does not mean that he lives in the Brahmin's heart and not in the ant's heart. Everyone's heart. A small insect, a full of life size. Uh, it has also the same anatomical, physiological uh, structure of the body and the same way jumping and enjoying, uh, you might have seen. So there is no difference between the body reconstruction. Everyone has got heart and everything, complete. Uh, but according to the desire and karma, we are getting different types of body. This is called material existence. So long we shall desire to enjoy this material world, so God will give us facility to possess a similar body so that we can satisfy our desire. Uh, therefore, He is situated witness, Anumanta uh, Upadrashta, He is overseer. And without his sanction, he cannot act. We cannot act. Therefore, his name is Anumanta. He gives sanction. All right, you want to do it, do it as you like. But ultimately, Krishna advises that in this way we will never be happy. This constant change, repeated change of body and different types of desire, if you continue, you will never be happy. Therefore, he advises, Sarva Dharma and Paritraja, Mami Kam Saranam You just surrender unto me and just then be engaged in my service, then you will be happy. So here it is said, Khetra Gang Chapi Mang Binti, Sarva Khetri Subharata, Khetra Khetra Gayam Gyanam, Jaj Gyanam Matam. So this is jnana, knowledge. We must know what is this constitution of this body, who is the occupier of the body, who is the supreme occupier of this body, how they are acting, how the bodily changes are taking place, and how we are uh, suffering in this, I say, purposefully suffering, because in the material world there is no enjoyment. It is illusion. Uh, it is only suffering. Only suffering. Uh, Dukhalayam asasatam. This place is Dukhalayam. Simply for suffering. And if you say, never mind, it is, I shall stay here and uh, continue like this. Then it is asasatam. That also will not be allowed. You cannot stay. You have to change the position. This is material condition of life. So, Krishna, jada jada hi dharma sabgrani bhavati bharata, he comes down to instruct us that this sort of life, materialistic way of life, will never make you happy. You take to Krishna consciousness, you surrender unto me, act according to my advice, then you will be happy. This is Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.